Well, after the Oilers extended the Stanley Cup final with their 5-3 win in Florida Tuesday, head coach Chris Knobloch was optimistic about heading back to Edmonton for game six on Friday. I think right now we're playing on house money. No one expected us to be here right now. No one gave us an opportunity, maybe even to be in the Stanley Cup final, uh, let alone give us an opportunity to claw our way back in this series. Um, so we're just having fun i don't know there's always been a lot of belief in this room and um we're just trying to stretch this out as long as we can i think we think about these things possibly differently right and i'm not sure that i would agree with the assessment that the pressure has shifted so heavily to us but i'm not going to try to work you to get it out in the media so i can possibly shift it over here right i'm not, I, I just We've had something that possibly to protect at three nothing, right? Protect the opportunity. We've earned this. Now we got to protect it. And they would have had nothing to protect in game four, nothing. So that's there's a little bit of a leveling out of what you what you feel like you have to protect. The only thing that consistent in pro sports is the losing coach says we had our chances. That's not what this is. But our five on five game was as good last night as it's been all series. That gets you out of bed, gets you ready for game six. For more, let's bring in our NHL analyst, Marty Biron. Uh, Marty, after Tuesday night's performance in which Connor McDavid inched closer to the all time playoff points list and also finished with back to back four point games, are you at the point like a lot of people are? I know Craig Button is. Uh, are you at the point where Connor McDavid is your Con Smythe winner at this point? Absolutely, absolutely. He has to be right now. And I know there's still a lot of hockey left. Hopefully for the Oilers, Game Six, and hopefully Game Seven, and that could decide the Conn Smythe winner when uh, it all said and done. But right now, it has to be Connor McDavid. He's the best player in the world. He's the best player in the final. He's the best player in the playoffs. You look at everything that he's done. 25 even strength points. I know we talk about well, Connor hasn't scored a lot of goals. He's got eight now, which is great. But 25 even strength points. The second place player is Evan Bouchard at 18, right? He's the first player to get to 40 points in the playoffs since Gretzky in 93. We're talking over, over 30 years for somebody to get to 40 points. And he's brought the team back. They were down 3 nothing, and then he put the team on his back. That, to me, is an MVP type of performance in Game 4 and Game 5. Obviously, he's got to keep it going, but he's done everything that he could. Without Conor McDavid, the Oilers would be in summer mode right now. They'd be, uh, you know, calling for tea times. They'd be having dinners with their friends and whatnot. <laughs> Connor McDavid is the sole reason the Oilers are where they are. A couple of wins away from winning the Stanley Cup. All right, so how confident are you, Marty, that they can win on Friday and send it back to Florida for Game 7? I'm very confident. Look, their power play is back alive. Their 5-on-5 five -five game has been really good. Seward Skinner looks so confident in Game 5 early on, and that is something for me that's so important to carry on into game six their penalty kill has been you know on fire with really big goals early in games when you think oh it could shift the other way but here's the thing and chris knoblock mentioned it they were playing with house money everybody's saying we were better when our backs against the wall you know it's kind of a pipe dream to come back from a 3-0 deficit in the stanley cup final and win it it's only been done one to 40s but still like you think about it and you're playing very loose now game six it's real the fact that you thought, hey, if we win game five in Florida, come back home, we'll win game six and take it to game seven. All of a sudden, that story, you know, that you're trying to create is real. And there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. So confident, I'm very confident. I think the orders are very confident, but you can't overlook it. You can't just think, hey, we're up by a couple of goals in the second period. That's good. Game seven, there we come. That can never enter your mind. You have to play that game like you did game four, game five. Confidence is got to be at an all-time high. I'm very confident the Oilers can pull it off and play again on Monday night. As for Edmonton's Alberta Cousins, they pulled off a massive trade on Wednesday, and their goaltender, Jake Markstrom, is finally heading out of town. Markstrom goes to the New Jersey Devils, as we expected, for a 2025 first-rounder, top-10 protected, and defensive prospect. Kevin Ball and Marty Jake Markstrom was clearly the best goalie available this offseason. Are you surprised Craig Conroy and company weren't able to get more for him? Yeah, I'm very surprised and I get the no movement clause comes into play, right? Because Markstrom ultimately is going to decide where he wants to go. 
But if you're the Calgary Flames, you have to play the game. You have to have had more offers and more teams willing to make a pitch for, you know, Jacob Markstrom. So you got to call back New Jersey and say, I need more. And then you call Weber. The Ottawa Senators had to be involved in that conversation and other teams. You have to be able to play that game. Now, if it was Markstrom straight against a, you know, for a first rounder in 2025 and Kevin Ball, I'd say, okay, it's average. It's all right. They did the best they could. But the Calgary Flames retain 30% on Jacob Markstrom. That alone should be, listen, we got to have the 10th overall pick this year in 2024. Yeah. We're not going to go to 2025 for first rounder. Who knows? That could be a 25th overall, 28th overall. If New Jersey makes the playoffs and go on a run, could be a 32nd overall pick. Like, that's not good enough for me. You have the best goalie available in the market. You have to make it count. And then you retain salary and you're not able to get more. I feel like that was a, uh, you know, a bit of a fail in the trade for Jacob Markstrom. It's good. It's out. You're out, out of it, and it's moving forward. But they could have got more for sure. Okay, so if you're a team in need of a goaltender this offseason, and uh, L.A. Kings already grabbed their guy, Darcy Kemper. He goes back to L.A. Uh, but if you're a team that does need a goaltender, how desperate are you for Linus Allmark at this point? you got to be very desperate, and the Boston Bruins are sitting in a really nice spot. Now, Allmark has a no-trade clause, different than the no-movement. No trade. There's 16 teams that he cannot be traded to, and obviously that list is in already. So, you know, the Boston Bruins are going to look for teams that are the other 15 teams that are not on that list. But listen, you're trying to do everything. If you're the Ottawa Senators, if you're the Utah Hockey Club, you're thinking we need to upgrade our goaltending. That may put us in the playoffs. We need to make a really strong effort to get Lena Solmark because he's the only top tier goaltender left really on the market. Uh, if you look at trading for a top-tier goaltender, the teams are not going to move anybody just for the heck of moving somebody. And now when you look at the unrestricted free agent, there's nobody in that level, right? You look at Laurent Brossois, Anthony Stolarz, Ilya Samsonov. You look at Cam Talbot. That's not Lena Solmark. Lena Solmark is a Vesna Trophy goaltender. So I think that Boston is sitting pretty. And if you need a top-tier goaltender, you're going to have to make a really strong offer to get him out of Boston.